Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Mansur, Associate Professor Mansur. I'll be giving the talk, and I'm from the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. And so this session is uh, to talk about the PhD and MEng programs. So these are the res research-based programs at the ECE department. Okay, so first I'll share my screen. Okay, so if you can't hear me or if you can't see anything on the on, on the screen, please uh, inform me. Okay, so this this will be a short talk. Okay, so it's about the PhD and MEng research-based uh, degree programs at the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department of uh, the College of Design and Engineering. And I'm the Deputy Head for Research and Graduate Programs at the ECE Department. So welcome to everyone here. Okay, so we'll, uh, I'll give the talk first. And if you have any questions, uh, please defer till the end where we'll be having a question and answer session. So together with me, there will be also the administrative team. Okay, so this is me, Deputy Head, and I'm assisted by Associate Head, Professor Mohan, and uh, the Admin Office, Ms. Eunice, as well as Ms. Lina and Ms. Siti. So Eunice would be the AO, Administrative Officer, in charge of the two programs, whereas Ms. Lina and Ms. Siti, they are the uh, AOs in charge of admissions. Okay. Because before you enter the program, you have to go through the admissions process. So uh, you be if you are interested to apply, then the first people that you will be liaising with would be uh, the admissions officers. Okay, Miss Lina and Miss City. Okay, so firstly, okay, before you start on say a PhD program or even a master's program, you have to give it plenty of thought. Okay, because it's not a, a short term thing. It takes like for PhD, it takes at least four years of your life. And this is at the prime of your life where you would start, you know, if you do not embark on PhD, you would be doing other things like starting on your career. So there is an, a big opportunity cost involved. So that's why uh, before you really uh, commit yourself to a PhD program, uh, it's, uh, you, you need to think very carefully. Okay, so for the normal career path, you know, you join a particular industry. Okay, so what I have here is a very schematic graph of income versus freedom. And it's really a, a balance between uh, income, okay, the amount of money you make, and the freedom and passion to follow what you really like to do. So if you join uh, an industry, for instance, uh, chances are that uh, the income would be higher and you would also have a head start because you spend less years in study okay, without the PhD. Um, but you're, you tend to be a bit constrained. Okay? You need to work on something that your company wants uh, you to do. And uh, the freedom is a bit limited and the chances of you being uh, allowed Okay, to experiment and to experience failure is very limited okay, because industries and companies as a whole, they are chasing after profits. So there is a danger that you might be fired if you make a, mis a major mistake. Okay, whereas uh, for a PhD graduate, okay, um, the income in the academic path may not be as high as some of the high flyers in the private sector. But uh, weighted against that is that you have much more freedom okay, to follow your passion. And if you really have a burning desire to really find out something and be an expert in some particular area of interest, then uh, this is the path to follow. Okay? Because uh, as you proceed in the academic career, uh, you will be given more and more freedom okay, to follow um, your passion and your curiosity. And failure is part of the process of doing a PhD and uh, following an, a research career, research-based career. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's pros and cons. So it's something that each individual would have to we, okay, what do you value most? 
Okay, and um, this is some survey that um, MOE does every year uh, for our BNG graduate. Okay, and these are the typical salaries that our fresh BNG graduates uh, earn, okay, which is for computer engineering is 5,000 and for electrical engineering, somewhere around 4,000. So these are quite, um, you know, comfortable amount of money to live on. And this amount is just a starting salary and it goes up after that. So um, when you compare to the PhD uh, route, okay, um, it's, 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 this is quite a big enticement not to do a PhD. Okay, but uh, if you decide to do a PhD, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, financially uh, you would have to support everything on your own. We do provide scholarships, which I'm going to talk about later. And so that, that helps a bit, but it won't be as high as these starting salaries. But later on, um, as you proceed further in your academic career as a researcher, and uh, some of you may even go on to become professors and uh, lead researchers in some uh, companies, then the uh, financial side is actually uh, quite good. Uh, I mean, relative to the industrial part. Okay, and also, um, if you go towards the academic route, it doesn't mean that um, your path to industry is completely closed off. In fact, many of our PhD graduates actually get hired in industry. Okay, and um, in Singapore, uh, things are really looking up for PhD graduates and also for MNG graduates, because Singapore is um, a very high cost, uh, high, has high, very high labor cost. So we cannot survive by doing you know, the low level kind of technology. So there is always a continuous push to go for the upper rungs of the technological ladder. And um, the government have been very successful in attracting a lot of uh, high tech, uh, companies to come and invest in Singapore and many of them have research units some of them based in the science park close to NUS and these research units uh, employ very highly trained uh, staff people with PhD people with uh, masters of engineering degrees and so on so these are some of the names of uh, the companies Okay, and we also have uh, statutory boards. They also are uh, going into research. Okay, IDA, HDB even, and PUB on water research. MINDEF on defense related research. And uh, of course, tertiary institutions, NUS, NTU, and all the other universities and polytechnics and ASTAR research institutes. So the job opportunities for PhD graduates are much wider now compared to say a decade ago and right now we also have like internet companies like uh, SEA okay uh, the the one that developed Shopee and also um, Grab okay so these are also employing some of our graduates especially those in the artificial intelligence area okay and um and they are finding jobs not only in Singapore, but uh, like I say here, that with a PhD degree, the world beckons. You, you can uh, scout around for job opportunities all over the world because NUS is a very well-known, uh, well-renowned university. Okay, and some of the um, professors in our department, okay, if you work under them, they are well connected with professors elsewhere in US, China, Europe, Australia, India. And so you can also find a context through your own professor okay, to get a, a position elsewhere. So we have um, graduates that uh, entered industry in US, Europe, and China, and also uh, graduates that entered the academic uh, arena in US, UK, Europe, Australia, China, and India. And some of these are, okay, uh, the ones that listed here, I, I list like research fellow and postdoc fellow. That was their initial posting when they, you know, they landed in the US. But later on, some of them 
actually became professors. Okay, so the uh, example is like Professor Tony Lowe in uh, the US. It's quite renowned in the nanoelectronics area. He was a PhD student here in NUS, I think about a decade ago. Okay, so the world beckons with a PhD degree, much more than say a bachelor's degree. Okay, so that's the intro and uh, I'll speak a bit about the program itself. So there are three programs that are focused on research. So um, uh, some of you may have set for the MSc uh, programs that was also uh, that is also offered by our department. That is the MSc in Com Computer Engineering and MSc in Electrical Engineering. So those two are coursework based pro programs. Okay, meaning that coursework. Uh, is the primary uh, focus of those programs. Okay, whereas uh, the programs that I'm going to talk about, PhD, Engineering Doctorate, and Masters of Engineering, these are research-based programs. Okay. And which means that although you do a bit of coursework, uh, that's not the main part of your uh, activity in these programs. The main part is the research side. And at the end of which you are, okay, um, maybe I, I go through each one of them. So at the end of which uh, for the PhD program, you are looking at uh, the, uh, the thesis, okay? Completing a thesis uh, and this takes over four years to complete the thesis and then to uh, have an oral defense of your thesis. So that's the end point of your PhD. But I put here six modules. Uh, you still have to take six modules. So there is still a coursework component. And for these six modules, you do have to get a certain um, grade point average okay, to, to proceed. Okay, and uh, because it's research-based, uh, PhD, we look at outputs such as journal papers, conference papers, uh, things like that. And you put together your research, um, your body of research work into a thesis and then defend it. Um, then for engineering doctorate, it's actually very similar to a PhD. Uh, it takes four years, but the coursework component is slightly heavier because it includes four techno technology management modules plus four usual technical modules. And at the end of which, again, uh, you can either uh, compile together a thesis or because of the engineering, uh, sorry, the industrial focus of engineering doctorate, this NGD, you can also uh, put together your body of work as, a, as an industrial portfolio uh, in lieu of a thesis. So that's also possible. I'll talk a bit more about engineering doctorate later on. And finally, uh, we have the Masters of Engineering program, and this is a two-year program. And for this, you need to take four uh, technical modules as a coursework requirement, and for the research part, uh, to complete a thesis after around two years. And for this, there is no oral defense. The thesis will just be examined by the examiner without an oral defense. Okay, and uh, these are the um, links if you need to know more. Okay, because uh, the, the actual requirement is, uh, you know, is very detailed. So I'm just giving you the broad outline. Okay, and if you have any specific question, you can ask uh, at the end of this talk. Okay, so, uh, I, I said here that uh, the focus is on research. So what are the research areas that uh, ECE is involved in? Okay, so this is a very, I mean, it's impossible to encapsulate and summarize all the research done by all our academic staff and researchers in our department in a few minutes, but I'm just giving you a very broad overview. So these are the main areas that our academics, professors, as well as researchers are involved in at our department. 
And um, if you join a P our PhD program, you have opportunities to work at the very forefront of global research in these areas. And many of them are emerging areas that will uh, drive you know, the next generation uh, industry 4.0, as they say. So um, these hot areas are AI, machine, and deep learning. That's one area, top left here. Wearable electronics and bioelectronics, that's another one. Nanoelectronics and advanced semiconductors. You know, semiconductors are becoming very important, becoming even geopolitical in nature. So that's uh, another important area. And uh, another area that's becoming more important and also geopolitical as well is 5G and IoT and quantum communications and renewables, you know, with all this climate change crisis and so on. Again, another important area, renewables, smart grid, EV, uh, the electrical uh, vehicles. Okay, so that's another um, big area. And um, intelligent robotics and control. So this is uh, an area which we also focus on together with mechanical engineering. And um, but uh, for for our case, uh, the ECE one, we are trying to marry the the robotics with intelligence. Okay, because we have expertise in the AI area. So it's a marriage of two technologies. Um, yeah. Like I say, you, you have opportunities to work with very highly uh, renowned professors. Some of them are in the, this uh, list of highly cited researchers. And as a whole, our department is highly ranked internationally. It's ranked eighth in the world in the QS ranking, the latest one. So if you're interested in these areas and you're interested to do a PhD in our department, I suggest that you go to our website here, which lists the research areas and the professors working in these particular areas. And you should get in touch with the professor and talk about your interests and he'll advise further, uh, you know, like what you need to do to prepare for PhD in particular areas. How do you go about applying and so on? Okay, like I say, um, there are two parts in the application process. The first is to get admissions. And secondly, also um, to get the scholarship. And there are various, uh, and scholarship is important because the otherwise uh, the tuition fees, which is quite hefty, would have to be borne by you over four years. And that's quite a hefty sum. So many of our graduates, uh, PhD um, students are actually supported by research scholarships. And there are two types of research scholarships. Uh, one is what we call the premier type. So these are highly competitive, managed at the university level. Uh, the amount is uh, significantly higher than the normal uh, scholarship. And you can uh, get more details about it, but the, the amount is listed here. And you have a different amount pre-QE and post-QE. QE is the qualifying examination that most students would sit towards the end of the second year. And once you pass this QE, then you are allowed to complete the third and fourth year. The QE takes in the form of a mini oral defense of what you have done in the first two years, as well as a liter literature critique of a paper, of a journal paper or conference paper. Okay, so this is the premier scholarship. And for the normal research scholarship, uh, the amount is a bit lower. Okay, so these are the listed amounts. And um, so these are the stipends. Addition, in addition to the stipends, you, your tuition fees will be fully paid okay, by the scholarship. Okay. And uh, there is no bond. Okay, so um, but for some scholarships, like those scholarships by MOE, you are required to do some graduate assistantship uh, hours, meaning you, you are supposed to serve as a graduate tutor, a graduate assistant helping out in teaching, uh, which in a sense is also good for your CV because uh, it helps that you have some teaching experience. 
And uh, lastly, we have a very, very limited and very special class of research scholarships for Masters of Engineering program. So most of our Masters of Engineering students do not have any scholarship. So I think like 95% of the scholarships are reserved for PhD. This 5% is for very specific um, company uh, funded you know, programs and in specific research areas. Okay, so they're very limited. So, so most of our Masters of Engineering students uh, actually pay on their own. They are self-funded. Uh, at the same time, we do have uh, joint PhD programs and collaborative initiatives with other universities. We have uh, joint PhD with, uh, with IITs in India and also uh, with uh, another university in Singapore, which is known as the Singapore University of Technology and Design and with uh, various institutions in China, such as Shanghai Jiao Tong University in Shanghai. And we also have our NUS Research Institute based in China. Uh, we have two of them, one in Suzhou and one in Chongqing in Sichuan. Okay, and uh, lastly, we also have a co collaboration with SASTEC in Shenzhen, also in China. So for all these joint PhD programs, you will be spending about half of your time in the partner universities and half of the time in NUS. So, and you also have two supervisors in both uh, hosting universities. Okay, I, I want to talk a bit about the industry relevant research schemes because some of you may not be, um, May, may actually want to have um, a foot in both uh, areas, academia, uh, but at the same time, you also want to pursue goals in industry. You, you want to have uh, dealings with industry. So it's possible because we do have PhD that are related to industry. And there are three types. One is the IPP, the in Industrial Postgraduate Program, but this is limited to Singaporean or Singapore permanent resident only. Okay, so this is funded by EDB and uh, you'll be working with a company. So you have uh, a supervisor in that company and a supervisor in NUS. And the company provides uh, funding um, uh, and also you may be working in that company. So you have like a nearly guaranteed job in that company after you finish your PhD. But of course your PhD would be geared towards things that that company would be interested in. Uh, but it's, uh, it still has academic uh, content because you still have a professor in NUS guiding you. Then the other one is the industry relevant scholarships or ring fence scholarships. So these are specific scholarships only for PhD uh, projects that have industry relevance, meaning that you would have um, some collaboration with industry, but you are not really working with that company, but you have you or your supervisor in NUS has a collaboration, some collaboration with industry. And again, you have an industry advisor. So I must say the, the, the first one has a greater industry uh, like participation, second one less, but still you do have industrial inputs. And finally, the third one uh, maybe is uh, similar to the first one, the IPP program but um, uh, it has uh, content. So this is the engineering dog program. And for this thing with that company, uh, earning a salary there. Okay, so for the engineering doctorate program, you're working with a company, having an advisor there, uh, but 50% of your time, you'll be working in NUS under uh, a research, uh, under your supervisor in NUS, but both sides are actually working together. 
And um, the industrial focus means that you are solving certain industrial relevant problems uh, faced uh, by that company. Uh, and so you can either um, do a thesis. Okay, if you do a thesis, that means that it still has to be deep academically, or you can also do an industry portfolio, which means that you have a series of patents and industry design or problems that you have solved, a series of them put together as a portfolio. So those are the three industry related programs. Okay, but for the IPP, the first one is uh, limited to Singaporean or SPR citizens, uh, Singapore permanent residents. Okay, so I go quickly towards the rest. Um, so it basically it's for people who are passionate about research, if you want to do a PhD. And so these are some of our testimonies from our graduates, like uh, Chen Lianwei, now Dr. Chen. He uh, did, a, he said that our program is highly flexible, introduced to a supervisor, Professor Fong Mingwei, very renowned professor in the world of photonics and um, get exposed to world-class experimental in instruments and open to young, enthusiastic young researchers like him. Okay, and um, you can uh, also get, participate in international conferences um, like uh, Dr. Anjagi, Anjangi under Professor Manda. He won the best paper award for his work of, uh, for underwater robotics. Uh, in an international conference. So you get to meet other young researchers at international conferences. And you also get uh, opportunities to uh, participate in research competitions. So for instance, here, this is the UAV competition, um, unmanned aviation vehicle or robot, robots. So this was held in China and we got third place. So again, you can work as a team compete with other universities elsewhere. And uh, it's not just uh, work and study. We also have a grad student community and graduate student um, body that organizes games and social events, you know, for you to relax and get to know other PhD students. Okay, so uh, important one is uh, application deadlines. So we have two intakes. The main intake is in August. And, and subsidiary intake in January. So if you're interested in the August 2023 intake, then the closing date would be 1st of January, 2023 for international candidates. Um, but for applicants uh, residing in Singapore, if you want scholarship, yeah, the same uh, deadline holds. But if you're not, um, Okay, uh, for Singapore, meaning uh, foreigners who are already in Singapore, you can also um, go for the second uh, deadline, which is the 1st of April, 2023. This is for round two scholarship. And then we have the subsidiary intake. The next one would be January, 2023. That means the deadline would be 1st of July, 2022, which is tomorrow. Okay, but uh, I, I mean, it would be too late if you want to go for the January. So I guess you're going for the August 2023. Um, but if you're residing in Singapore, you can still try because the deadline is 1st of September 2022. Okay, if you want to go for the January 2023 intake. Okay, so basically graduate studies is for you if you're interested in a challenge, you want to achieve something significant academically, you want to discover and learn new things much deeper than what you study at, in your bachelor's degree, and you want to improve yourself, improve your life and lives of people around you technologically, and if it fits you. Okay, so this is the useful link. So hope to see you soon. Hope to get your applications if you're interested. Okay, and thank you. So I have uh, one query of, on the chat. So are there possibilities for EE taught masters to apply for this research program? Yes, meaning after, after you have finished your master's uh, MSc program, yes, you can apply for 
your PH uh, uh, for a PhD uh, degree after that. Yes, that's possible. Okay, so are there any uh, questions apart from that? Okay, so uh, if you do not have any questions, uh, I, I go back to maybe the second slide. Okay, so if you do not have any questions, but you have now, but you have questions later on, please email uh, any one of us here. If not, I think we have to end soon because uh, there is still, the, um, I mean, okay, maybe one last question, anyone? Okay, so if not, um, we'll end here. So for those of uh, who are here, you can still rejoin the main group because there is still uh, talks ongoing starting at 6 p.m. Okay, so do not leave if you still uh, want to follow other um, you know, programs whose talk will be starting at 6 p.m. Okay, so you can rejoin the main group. Okay, so I guess uh, we can... Okay, thanks everyone uh, for participating. Okay, so I'll, I'll end here. Okay, thank you.